So we have to uh, evaluate why diabetes and uh, women actually is a very, very vast topic. There are, although men and women are equal, but they are not the same in their physiology. And they're also not the same in the way they present with diseases. So they may have more obesity, they have more fatty liver, they have more depression, they have more risk of cardiovascular disease, and they also have more of atherogenic dyslipidemia in diabetes. And you see here, this is the ICMR study, which tells us that the prevalence of diabetes is more in the urban area compared to the rural. But if you look at men and women, you see men have more prevalence up to the age of 50 to 60. And after that, you can see the women catching up. Postmenopausal women, the incidence of diabetes is very high, but prediabetes can be the same. So does diabetes affect men and women differently? No, diabetes affects men and women equally. But women are more severely impacted by its consequences. And here you can see the bars here. The diabetes-related mortality is much higher in the women compared to the men. Globally, there are more deaths in women, 2.3 million, compared to men, 1.3 million. And you see the purple bars, which are going higher than the men. And these are going much higher when the woman attains menopause, and almost five times more than men. And this is the reason why women suffer more when they are diabetic, because they have a life cycle compared to the men who don't. It starts from childhood, and we are the largest childhood obesity nation in the world, I mean the second largest. And these youngsters are going to be more and more obese, and they will suffer from problems of metabolism, giving rise to obesity, PCOS, and also problems with pregnancy, pregestational diabetes, and that will produce a progeny of uh, NCDs in the future pregnancies as well. So it all starts in the intrauterine life. And this woman who has a female fetus will have the ova of the fetus bathed in a hyperglycemic environment if the, of course, fetus is a female fetus. And this, when the offspring grows up, she will start getting the NCDs of obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular risk, and also the other complications of metabolic diseases. So it is kind of a transmission of diabetes to the progeny known as intergenerational cycling of obesity, CVD, and NAPILD. And this is a meta-analysis of 64 cohorts, including more than 7 lakh individuals and 12,539 strokes. And what they found was there was a 20% increased risk of stroke in women than men. And the same analysis has also shown there's a 44% greater risk of coronary heart disease in women compared to men. And the reason being is that the risk factors in women are much more. In fact, they're double that of men where atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease is concerned. On the left-hand side, you can see the conventional risk factors, diabetes, smoking, obesity, overweight, physical inactivity, hypertension, dyslipidemia. These are same in men and women, but women have additional risk factors, preterm delivery, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, gestational diabetes, autoimmune disease, breast cancer treatment, and depression, and so they are at double risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, and other metabolic complications. Even the fracture risk increases in women after menopause. But if you see this bar diagram graphs, you can see the one, the women have the maroon color at all times, at all times, and at whatever age, after the age of 20, women have a higher fracture risk compared to the men. And once they reach menopause, this risk doubles or becomes five times greater. 
And we know the reasons why they have this increased risk in diabetic women, because besides a, a faulty bone growth and osteoporosis and, and uh, defects in the formation of trabecular bone and also in the cortical bone, in addition, they have other complications like retinopathy, neuropathy. They may have cardiovascular problems like, like heart failure and arrhythmias. They may have old strokes, and they may also have osteoarthritis, which makes these women vulnerable to falls and fractures. And even hypertension is much higher in the women compared to the men. For every one man, there are at least two women having hypertension. And those who have recovered from ischemic heart disease, the risk of heart failure in women is twice that of men. So at every stage, women have the impact of diabetes is much higher in women compared to men. And therefore, there is a need for gender-specific diabetes management. And this was a study of the Prospective Studies Collaboration and the Asia-Pacific Studies Collaboration. Together, they collaborated to the meta-analysis of individualized data of more than nine lakh adults from 68 prospective studies. And what did they find? We have now evidence to show that there is excess mortality among women with diabetes. And this was investigated within other modifiable risk factors as BMI, total cholesterol, and systolic blood pressure compared to men. And therefore, we need protocols which we are showing you today. And these protocols will help us to form a guideline or at least to have these gender-specific guidelines included in our anti-diabetic guidelines, both at the global level and also in our Indian guideline. And so there is a change. A change is happening. You can see there is a call to action for studying these sex differences. And this is the latest paper presented in the Journal of Cardiology 2022, where we, men and women are shown to be, to be different in the way they, the impact of hypertension, obesity, and diabetes has on them. But yet, when you look at the guidelines, it shows that men and women are equal and they have the same treatment. So this has to change. So we have to have more prospective uh, RCTs. We need to have more research to show that women are impacted differently and therefore they require specific guidelines which can be different from men. And to take us over this journey through the life cycle and the life uh, of a woman, we have Dr. Shalini who will be telling us about the problems in women in the reproductive age, and Dr. Nitin Kapoor will tell us the problems in women in the post-reproductive age, and that will cover the entire journey of a woman. And I will come back after them to tell you about the protocols, what we have designed to have an impact in their management. So may I invite Dr. Shalini?